Okay, so we've looked at, up until now, we've looked at motion. Um, but one thing that we have not discussed yet is that the velocity, I'm just going to read here, the velocity measured for any object. So recall, we've looked a lot at velocity, especially for kinetic energy, conservation of momentum. The velocity that we measure actually depends on the motion of the observer the person doing the measuring. So say now we've had an, uh, an object moving with a certain velocity. Um, what we need to see is that this velocity is dependent on if you're standing here, right? It's dependent on your motion. If, for example, if you're standing still, then this thing, this object has a certain velocity. But what happens if you're also moving at a certain velocity? Then what is the velocity relative to your velocity? So an example, this is similar here, an example is if a person sits on a moving train, okay, so let's, let's say there's a moving train, okay, so you're sitting there, uh, there's your arms, there's your hand, there's a, there's a suitcase up on the shelf. Okay, so and this train is moving with a certain velocity. Uh, a suitcase, so to this person here, this suitcase has a velocity equal to zero because this person is moving at the same speed as the suitcase. But to a person that's standing on the platform, right, his velocity is zero relative to the platform, and so the 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 suitcase doesn't have a velocity equal to zero, it's got a velocity that is the same as the train. So the suitcase to this guy is not at rest. So according to the person in the train, this guy, the suitcase has zero momentum. Why? Because the velocity is zero and zero kinetic energy. Why? Because this velocity relative to this person is zero. Also, According to the person on the platform, the suitcase has a non-zero momentum and a non-zero kinetic energy. Why? Because the kinetic energy of the briefcase suitcase relative to this person is not zero. Okay, so I hope you're not too confused. It's actually not a bad idea to get confused sometimes. Um, so now what are we going to do in this chapter? First of all, we're going to analyze this kind of motion. Okay, how does motion change based on the observer? How does the velocity change based on the observer? But also, um, are the laws of conservation of momentum and conser conservation of energy, are they the same in every reference frame? Do they depend on the velocity of the observer? Okay, in other words, if these laws are valid for one observer, are they also valid for observers, for an observer who is moving relative to the first observer? Okay, so the conservation laws, conservation of momentum, conservation of energy, are they the same in different reference frames? Okay, so hopefully that makes a bit of sense. See you in the next one.